I have a lot of people who um, who talk to me uh, offline, if you will. They um, they'll tell me things that they won't tell anybody else because of their position, or you know, they don't want to seem crazy or whatever. I got a call from um, a friend of mine who is uh, very high placed. He said, "Everybody I know, Glenn, is reading about the Weimar Republic," and I said, "Oh, geez, the loaf of bread with a wheelbarrow full of money, Republic?" He said, "Mm-hmm." It is what a lot of people believe is coming. Try to buy a book online about the Weimar Republic. You will have a hard time finding some of the books. They, uh, a lot of them are just suddenly gone. Who's reading them all and why now? Peter Schiff, president of Europac and author of the little book of bull moves and bear markets. Peter, um, worst nightmare looks like it's coming, uh, coming true because, you know, as much as anybody wants to say that we're borrowing this money, we are borrowing some of this money, but, but people are also asking for insurance, if you will, on our treasuries, which has never, ever happened before. We need credit default swaps on our treasuries now to make sure that, because some people are saying, I don't know if they're good for the money. We're printing a lot of this money, aren't we? Well, I think that's where it's going to come from. Remember, credit comes from savings. And we blew through most of our savings when the dot-com bubble crashed. And, and then we started borrowing a lot of money uh, from the rest of the world. Uh, Wall Street helped us do this with these structured products where we tapped into the, the global savings glut. And we borrowed from China and Saudi Arabia and Russia and Japan. But now we can't pay the money back. And nobody wants to lend us any more. So they're trying to recreate it with a printing press. And that's exactly what happened in Weimar Republic, Germany. That that's what's happening in okay. Zimbabwe right now. When you have um, when you have inflation, let's just say inf uh, let's just say that uh, unemployment next year, next summer is maybe ten percent, and you inflation at what? What do you project next next year just well, by the amount of money that we put into the market? Well, I think it's already running a little bit north of ten percent. I think pretty soon, maybe a year or two down the line, it's going to be going at least twenty or thirty percent per For year. The government won't admit it, but it right. will be right. Um, and but they won't admit it, but. But we'll feel it. When inflation is 20 percent, you have uh, unemployment at, uh, you know, at least 10 percent. What happens then? People can't pay their bills. They can't pay their mortgages. They can't, can't pay their credit cards. I mean, the whole thing starts to fall. Well, they already, Glenn, they already can't pay their bills. I know. Already, and, and the government, see, instead of encouraging us to start saving now so we can pay back the debt, they're trying to encourage us to borrow even more money and spend that. You know, what's going to happen, of course, is as inflation starts running out of control and prices start going through the roof, the government, again, is going to focus on the, 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 the symptoms and not the disease, yeah. and they're going to impose prices price controls on energy, on food, on a lot of other things that are vital, which means shortages, which means long lines, black markets, civil unrest. All this stuff is coming if we don't stop. Okay, Peter, let me be just a conspiracy guy here for just a second, because what, what drives me crazy is all these people are so very smart. They know. I mean, you know, I get a call from somebody who is in the know, and he says everybody's reading about this. Everybody is where? And this is a guy at, a, at the highest level of global banking. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, are well, we being remember, pushed you know, into a global one financial system? What, what, what is happening? I don't know what's going to happen as far as a global currency, but if you remember the Weimar Republic, they were in trouble because of the reparations from the Treaty of Versailles. No, actually, they had if huge external it, liabilities. If you're not, if you don't, if, if I may take you back one step, they got into a war and decided they didn't want to finance it with taxes or finance it with bonds. They just decided to run a deficit. That yeah, was the sounds, first step. Right, that sounds very familiar. Yeah. That's what we're doing with Iraq. But the, re the thing is, we owe the world probably as much, if not more, than Germany owed. Only we didn't incur this debt fighting a war. We incurred it remodeling our houses and buying cars and television sets and, and iPods and all these little gadgets that we didn't need. And now we owe the world trillions, right. and we're reaching for the printing press to pay it back. And we're also reaching for a stimulus package, which we have to go to the printing press to get that, too. Well, and all these tax rebates and everything else. All of it is coming from a printing press. There's no more money. Okay. You know, we can't borrow it anymore from the rest of the world because we, how can we pay it? We can't okay. pay back the money we've Peter, already I wanna, borrowed. Somebody, I, I talked to somebody at church yesterday, and he said, I was reading something about Peter, and I, I want you to stick around for a second after the break. I want to talk to you about something else that has been on my mind, and apparently, at least according to one of my friends at church, you it's on your mind as well. Did the administration hard sell Congress on the bailout by dangling the threat of martial law? What's that all about? And martial law. Peter just said it. We're going to talk about it next. The Coming up, Barack Obama will cut taxes for 95% of Americans when he takes office next January.
sweetness. I mean, unless you're part of that nasty 5%. Shouldn't be a problem, you know, to cut taxes in the uh, middle of the largest government spending spree of all time, right? Cutting taxes is a good thing. Oh, yeah, and then, by the way, he's going to squeeze out universal health care as well. Mm, that's the kind of change I've been hoping for. I'll tell you the truth behind the tax plan in tonight's real story. Don't miss it. But first, when people are frightened, they make different decisions than they would when they were feeling safe or secure. Sometimes when that fear is justified, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's common sense. But when that fear is manufactured, it feels an awful lot like coercion. For instance, when the uh, U.S. bailout bill was trying to be jammed through Congress, some members say there was an organized effort to scare them into signing. Here is the California Democratic Congressman Brad Sherman. Many of us were told in private conversations that if we voted against this bill on Monday, that the sky would fall, the market would drop two or three thousand points the first day, another couple thousand the second day, and a few members were even told that there would be martial law in America if we voted no. That's what I call fear-mongering. Okay. Uh, we've called this uh, congressman's office. He's not speaking to the press. I wonder if there's more fear or intimidation going on. Martial law. Could it really have happened? Joining me once again is Europac president and author, of, uh, an author Peter Schiff. Um, Peter, let's talk a little bit about uh, martial law. Why, why would that even be a consideration? Well, I don't think it was a threat uh, if they had rejected the bailout bill, but I think it is a possibility a few years down the line. We just spoke a little bit about price controls and the effect that they're going to have. If we have shortages of food, if we have rolling uh, blackouts, and people are upset and they're hungry and they're cold, uh, there could be civil unrest, there could be looting, rioting, and that might be the impetus for the government to declare martial law. You know what, I, I don't think you're a couple of years away from something like that. I mean, honestly, Peter, I mean, look at what's happening. In a, in a half hour, I've, uh, I've got a congressman on about, um, about the, um, uh, the racism cries. I mean, there, there are people that are right now so disenfranchised, and I think being encouraged to be disenfranchised on both sides, that at any time this damn thing could, could yeah. break and, apart. And we're giving the government so much power, and you know, you give up a lot more civil liberties. When you have martial law, and you've got the military policing our streets, when you've got suspension of habeas corpus, you've got curfews, you can't be out of your house after dark, and they can just pick you up and put you in prison and keep you there indefinitely without charges, and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, we're giving up one liberty after another, all to protect ourselves from this economic crisis, which needs to happen anyway, but it doesn't need to need be nearly this bad. Peter, I mean, it, Peter th this is, I mean, I mean, we're in crazy town, USA. But, I, but my gut tells me that two years down the road, let's just use that number, this country is not going to look at anything like it does today. Our world has changed. Oh, it just hasn't course. caught up. I mean, we've blown away by France already. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're not going to become France. I'm hoping we don't become Zimbabwe, but that's where we're headed. Explain that. Because most people, most people will say that's insane. I sat with a guy, I sat with a guy uh, this weekend who's a good friend of mine. He said, Glenn, I got to tell you something. Six months ago, he's in the financial business. He said, six months ago, I thought you were crazy. He said, how did you know? And I said, it's common sense. It, it is common right. sense. And, you know, people think that hyperinflation can't happen here. Well, you know, the laws of physics works everywhere. If you throw a ball up in the air in Zimbabwe, gravity is going to bring it back down, just the way it is here. And economics is a science. There are laws. And it doesn't matter where you apply them, you're going to get the same result. So if we follow their monetary policy, that's where we're going to go. We need to replenish our savings. And the government is not letting us do that. The government is forcing spending. They're, they're, they're force-feeding spending down our throats. Peter, they do, want you us to do you remember, do you remember in, in the Great Depression, I mean, not like you or I that were there, but uh, I've been doing my homework on the, uh, the Great Depression the last couple of years. This is what, exactly what the government did. In fact, in, I think, 1935, they said to companies, you must spend your money or we tax it all and take it away. And the company you know, said, we can't do that. We won't yeah. have any money for a rainy day. Lo and the, behold, the, rainy day came, crash again. Yeah, the left-wing agenda wants us to think that the reason there was a depression was because the government didn't do anything. That, that's not true. There were actually much. people that were advocating the government do nothing, but they didn't. They did a lot. Hoover did a lot of things, and he created a lot of damage, and then Roosevelt came in and did even worse stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, go, you know, America, go look for the little blue eagle. I remember always seeing that little war eagle. That was price control. That meant they, the government was basically saying, do not shop or buy any product without that blue eagle because they won't promise to sell it at a certain price. I mean, what kind of country were we living in 
And we're going back. Peter, thank you very much. Thank you. Coming up as a liberal voter outreach program, ACORN continues to deal with allegations.